what made me want to write the script. Basically, I, I had an idea that uh, I was meeting a lot of writers and just didn't click with their vision and my vision. Um, in the end, it was just something that, uh, number one, was a financial decision because a lot of the writers that we were looking into were charging an exorbitant amount. And then at the end of it all, uh, the writer's strike happened. And uh, it was sort of wanting to do it and getting forced into doing it. Um, and it was an ongoing process because in the end, what was shot wasn't exactly what was written. And uh, there was a, a constant amount of rewriting being done all the time. So a tremendous learning, learning experience. Um, uh, and in the end, I, I think that uh, I'm much better at all the other aspects of filmmaking for it. Those are my favorite films. I grew up on the Rambo films, the Schwarzenegger films. You know, these are the films that uh, when I was a kid, there were moments in these films that helped me guide, helped, helped me find a way to become a better person, I thought. I mean, that might be a little cliche, but when, you know, Han Solo was coming back to save Luke Skywalker during that moment, when, you know, he's most needed and you don't expect him to do so, then you say to yourself, listen, we can all rise to the occasion. The first aspects of producing were, were pretty sort of cut and dry. I mean, in a film, number one, you need, you need the financing. Number two, you need, you know, the, the right concept that uh, you think will, will sell in the marketplace. And um, I felt that based on all of the films that I had seen, my favorite films, I had an idea that could possibly be appealing to the audience. So, number one, I went to all my friends that were in the hedge fund industry, because that's where I'm from. And um, we got together and created a plan that um, allowed them to feel comfortable in what we were doing. Um, a lot of them were familiar with me already, with uh, my commitment and, and how I kind of operate, manage money. Um, so once that was done, it was just on to um, bringing all the creative elements together. And I then called upon everybody around me that I knew. Uh, mo most importantly was uh, Vic Armstrong, who I worked with on Bond. He was the second unit coordinator. And uh, he introduced me to, uh, to Jesse, Jesse Johnson, who's, who's the director. Uh, I had approached Vic to hopefully be able to direct it, but uh, he didn't have the uh, the scheduling and the time to, to do so. So uh, Jesse came on board, and and then uh, I, you know, some of his crew and, and other second unit directors and DPs, and finally got together a group of people that I felt were committed enough and had a had a high enough level of integrity to be able to kind of roll with it. I mean, really, you need people that are, are soldiers that you feel like could go into a war with. The skills that I had to learn most were being able to deal in a business that uh, a lot of times people don't come, come through with their own word or, or follow through with their word. I mean, How did you manage what that? I heard the most, the word that I heard the most while making this film was the word renegotiate. We would show up at a set, we would show up on a location and all of a sudden, you know, the people that we were dealing with all of a sudden wanted more money or had uh, given us the idea that uh, they were selling one thing, but we actually got another. Um, and you're dealing in, in a, an entirely different culture that I'd never done business in. So, yeah, I mean, just being able to roll with the punches, that's all. The biggest thing on my mind was I didn't want to let my boys down. That was the biggest thing because, I mean, basically, the money was raised through all my friends that were in the hedge fund business. Um, and these guys put their faith in me to be able to go and bring back something that, number one, was at least watchable. But number two, I wanted to give them something that they could be proud to be a part of. And there was no way I would come back without the film. But the, but there were a lot of moments when I thought it just wasn't going to happen. I mean, nights that I stayed up because, you know, one actor couldn't make it 
during the time that we had scheduled to shoot. And if that had happened, basically the whole shoot would have been off location. Um, I mean, I remember staying up four nights in a row to try to get the, uh, the uh, Bokeem over in time um, and then dealing with the travel agents and, and trying to work out with his agents. And um, that was the biggest thing going through my mind is, is the, the failure and the feeling of not being able to look them in the eyes and saying, you know, giving an excuse. Because I think that they had enough faith in me to know that I could overcome those. And so I just overcome that in, in whatever way. I met Jesse through uh, Vic Armstrong, who was a uh, dear friend and who I worked with on, uh, on Bond. He's like the godfather to, uh, to stuntmen and, and second unit directors. He's been in the business for so long and, and I traveled around with him and, and I put a tremendous amount of trust in, in everything that he, he does. Initially, I'd wanted him to direct, but his schedule didn't permit it. And so he recommended Jesse, who after meeting 10, 15 directors, he hounded me and hounded me, but he was my first choice right off the bat. Basically, Jesse brought his own team on. Uh, Garrett Warren, who's tremendous, tremendous stuntman and second unit director, and Bob Hayes, who's an incredible cinematographer, DP, who is just moving, constantly moving. I mean, this group of people, you can't speak enough about. This, you know, it, it's what they did that created the film. And, uh, you know, if I could only speak about the things that went on behind camera, um, so many situations where the film could have been just stopped abruptly. Um, so many situations where, you know, uh, obstacles and challenges presented themselves from nowhere. And, you know, this group of people were able to overcome it. And it was an amazing, amazing experience just to, just to watch that type of commitment, that type of loyalty, that type of de dedication. Uh, Jesse, for example, I mean, uh, the financiers were coming in at any given time just to overlook the set and see exactly what was going on. Um, there was never a moment where we could just relax and think, okay, well, you know, we're on our way. It was always, wow, this could be the last moment. This could be the last shot. I went from going and doing nothing to being in a studio film that was nominated to a big budget action film that, become, that became sort of like a cult favorite to one of the biggest franchises in the world. And, I had no perspective whatsoever on any of these, you know, topics and any aspect of filmmaking. Um, I was a hedge fund trader. I went to business school. No acting training whatsoever. And it all looked so easy. Um, but in the end, as an actor, all you are is a Monday morning, Monday afternoon, what do they call it? Monday afternoon quarterback. You show up. The grips and the electricians, they're the ones doing all the work. The director, the DP, they come together. The stunt coordinators have, have mapped everything out. And really, as an actor, you, you really just have to go with the flow of things. So that's Hollywood. Now, the independent world is completely different because you don't have... The biggest mistake I probably made on the film was going into it on my own. And my other producing partners, uh, Andrew Zaro, Patrick Cole, basically, one was... Uh, a hedge fund trader and another one was a computer engineer and they had no understanding of, uh, of filmmaking but I relied on the fact that they have that level of commitment and loyalty and I could trust them that's the biggest thing in making films um, and I'm sure that I've never produced a Hollywood picture but I'm sure that they face all these challenges it's just the level of experience that they have uh, my level of experience was basically zero um, and at the end of it all I was lucky enough to be with a crew and, and be with a talented uh, director and, and second unit director and, and a DP that got together and, and kind of rolled with the punches. That was it. I mean, that's the biggest story behind this is that it was a group of us with a little idea, a lot of heart, and we made it happen. The most difficult action sequence was probably the, the, the opening sequence because we did it all in one location. Um, we were promised a set number of days. Those number of days shortened dramatically. And um, we were trying to make do with um, special effects 
equipment that didn't arrive. Um, that first explosion, to give you an example, where the door explodes in front of uh, uh, the bodyguards and chance blasts through. The first time they did that, they used a small amount of explosive because um, they felt that they didn't want to hurt the actor. <laughs> and it left part of the door frame there. So there was a lot of pressure to get the shot done. And uh, the special effects guy brought out uh, what's called primer cord, which they don't use in the States generally for this type of shot. But because we were under pressure, we are in another country. We had the luxury of kind of pushing the limits. And he put a lot of primer cord around that door. And uh, when it went, it went. <laughs> I, was, I was right behind it when it went off. The roof fell down. The air got sucked out of, uh, of the hallway. And um, I got blasted. I, could, I can't really remember. All I remember is getting up and thinking, man, film is rolling. We can't waste film. You got to go through with it. And, uh, and we did. And then the rest of the day, the rest of the day was, was basically the same. Um, gunshot fight. I mean, that's, that's the one thing that was a benefit of producing it and also being an actor and also um, kind of, you know, working with a team that had pushed the limits because I thought the value was being able to show the actor actually taking the hits or the actor um, being in the thick of it all instead of a stuntman. Um, and, you know, I trusted in the team. Probably the most difficult scene to write was the one between the two brothers. Because it was the first time that they got together and were able to sort of share a moment, which is so very important, I think, in, in, in an action film, to bring those, uh, that element of a character or characters to show why things are happening why they're together, why they're going on their journey. And um, to tell you the truth, it was constant rewriting throughout the whole film. Number one, because the production was constantly changing due to locations being lost, due to aspects of the financing that had to be moved around due to scheduling of the actors. And um, I, th I felt that it was important to show why these two brothers came up the way they did. Um, and really it was about one trying to find out who he is and one already knowing. Um, and also to be able to show that there's always a second chance. There's always, you know, a moment in time when you can look at yourself and say, okay, well, I do want it. I do want it. I don't, uh, another shot at, at becoming who I really am. What I wanted for the fifth command was, was nothing more than to be able to give somebody else, some other kid, that moment that I got when I was growing up going to movies. That moment where they might learn something that could help them become a better person or give them um, some sort of insight into some part of their life that they're wondering about. That's why I love movies so much is going to watch sort of like, I know this might sound a little hokey, but when I was watching Rambo and, and <laughs> listen, you saw Rambo and the first Rambo was so amazing because this here's a guy for no other reason than just him trying to be on his way he was faced with so much, so many obstacles and, and he had to overcome all of it. Um, that said to me that somebody small could go up against somebody, somebody great or something great. When you saw, you know, Han Solo come back and save Luke Skywalker. I mean, that moment said to me that there's always a second chance. And to me, that's what the fifth commandment is about. It's about, you know, being able to give and being able to know that you can have a second chance. What's interesting today, because I, what, what I feel is going on is that uh, with uh, video games and everything that happening, happening on the internet, you can't really compete with the with sort of the 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 action that the kids are seeing nowadays I mean in the, in the end um, I think the biggest thing with any story or, or movie 
is the, is the ability to relate to the characters. I would say, in many respects, my most, my favorite action film of all time is probably The Professional, Jean Reno and Natalie Portman. Yeah, amazing film, right? Because the story was such that you could relate to the characters and they brought you in and no matter what happened, you were there with them. It was basically a love story at the end of it all, but it just happened to have a lot of action in it. And that's what I hoped, or I hope that the audience might see a little of in The Fifth Commandment. Story, story first, action second. Because everybody's seen a punch. We're in the you know, new millennium. Everybody's seen an explosion or, or a car chase. Um, but what makes it interesting is why they care about the characters. There's so many different fight styles out there. I think that most of the audience has seen all of it um, because martial arts has been in cinema for close to 40 years now. So I wanted to bring, or I, I was hoping to bring two different elements together which is sort of like a rhythm-based fight style that uh, nobody's ever seen before. What you see normally in, in the choreography is based on like a three, four, five count, you know, where Jackie and Jet, they do these things that aren't, aren't based on rhythm. It's very staccatic. What I was trying to do is base it on an eight count, which, you know, most dance choreography is based on. and. Um, I threw the idea out to, to Garrett, and he immediately took to it. Um, 52 Blocks was originally um, um, created uh, in the jail systems. I think it was out of Rikers. And uh, the, <laughs> the um, originator is a guy named Mother Deer. And, and it's, it's based on uh, space and how the utilization of space is, is brought together with sort of the amount of opponents that you have. One example of it is when you have to um, back up into a wall and jump off it. If somebody's coming out with the, come, if somebody's coming at you with a shank, basically you back up into it so that you draw the opponent in, and then you kick off the wall so that their distance at you is going to be somewhat skewed. And um, it's a risk. It is a risk because if he gets you, he gets you. But at the same time, closing the distance is. The, probably the most important thing when it comes to that style of fighting and then utilizing uh, aspects of space such as the wall to block your punches so if if you have two or more, more opponents um you back up against the wall and you don't try to block them you basically try to duck and use the wall as the as the block if that makes sense um and uh it was just something that uh you know we experimented with in hope you know, we got across to the audience and uh, it was it was a blast. It was a blast. So I, I I wasn't concerned about anything other than um, trying to make it look good. That was my biggest concern throughout the whole film: is being able to give value and, and being able to pull off um, a job that uh, everybody around me would be proud of. I'm Garrett Warren, uh, second unit director, stunt coordinator for the movie The Fifth Commandment. Hi, I'm Jesse Johnson, director of The Fifth Commandment. Uh, I was called by Rick Yoon, who had got my name from Vic Armstrong, who was the second unit action director on the James Bond movie Die Another Day. Uh, Rick wanted Vic to direct his, his passion script, which was The Fifth Commandment. Uh, unfortunately, Rick, uh, Vic was uh, committed to other other things at that time and put me in for the job and I'm very very thankful that he did because it turned into one of the biggest adventures of my life you know, it was a uh, it was a really fortuitous sort of meeting and uh, uh, I pretty much got down on one knee and begged for the for the for the job I think I drew storyboards I think I pestered poor Rick until till he got fed up of uh, me calling uh, 